As the country waits for CDC guidance on what schools should look like in the fall, many states are now moving ahead with their own guidance. Florida, Texas, and Iowa have banned mask mandates in schools, while states like New Jersey say it's not clear yet if they'll drop mask restrictions in the fall. And while New York is keeping indoor school masking for now, it is allowing districts to decide their own outdoor mask policies. So what should parents and kids do with all this uncertainty? Psychiatrist Dr. Janet Taylor and physician at Stanford Children's Health Dr. Alok Patel are here with more on this. Thank you both for, for being here. Thank you. So, Dr. Patel, parents are sending children to all different types of summer programs. They're also thinking ahead to the next school year. So how can we ensure our kids are safe with all these conflicting policies out there? I mean, Diane, conflicting policies, also conflicting headlines, and parents are just getting really sincerely confused. I think parents know what to do. You know, since the beginning of this pandemic, parents have been very good about paying attention to what community spread looks like, but also recommendations do not change when it comes to who needs to be wearing a mask, washing your hands, all the hygiene measures, all of that. But one thing that I think parents, two things I think parents can really do is encourage everyone around them in their communities to still get vaccinated. Because even if your child is not eligible to get vaccinated, people around them who are vaccinated will inherently protect your kids. That's the beauty of vaccines. That's what we mean when we say community immunity. And also, I hope all parents play an active role in talking to their school districts, visiting schools if they have to, to make sure it's safe. Because I think this upcoming fall, and I'm sure that anyone who's working with, with mental health and kids will agree, we need to prioritize getting kids back into schools rather than looking for reasons to keep them out of it. And Dr. Taylor, parents like everybody has their own different threshold of risk and concern. And in this period of uncertainty, this gray area of the pandemic, uh, how should people manage those risk levels and what kinds of things can authorities do to assuage them to get, uh, to get, people, get the kids back into school? So as Dr. Patel said, certainly getting people vaccinated and following uh, local rules and local guidance. But the reality is, if you are stressed and uncertain as a parent, and many are, we know that mothers who have children under the age of 18 have some of the highest stress levels, chances are your children are stressed too. So understand that our brain does not like uncertainty. We like facts and we like what's under our control. So if you are feeling stressed, talk to your child about how you're feeling, check in with them. Our kids don't necessarily say, I'm I'm anxious, I'm stressed, I'm depressed, but notice how they are sleeping, notice how they interact with you and their friends and talk to them. And now is the time to really talk about what it means to handle stress in a way that's positive. So you talk about it, you eat mindfully, you exercise and understand that if you're feeling that way, chances are other people are too. So we need to normalize our children's stress, talk to them about how we're stressed as parents and find real ideas and real solutions so that we can have a sense of calm and safety within our house and certainly when they're returning to camp or to school or whatever summer activities they will participate in. And Dr. Patel, Pfizer has advanced clinical trials for 5 to 11-year-olds at lower doses. So when do you think those kids will start to get vaccinated? I think we'll start to hopefully see this, this data roll out for that older group, the five to 11 year olds in September. Shortly thereafter, we should see it for that two to five year old age. And then maybe late fall, we'll see it for those kids that are six months to two. Now, the important things for people to pay attention to is that this trial is really looking for safety, also an immune response, and looking to see if that immune response matches that of older adolescents and young adults who've already gotten the vaccine because there's less COVID-19 running around right now. And so it's hard to really match who's gonna get COVID versus who's not. But it is able, the vaccine trial is able to look to see what immune responses look like. And one thing I have to stress, you know, in terms of what we just heard about, you know, trust and open communication, I really hope with this trial, we are very transparent as educators, as public health officials, as a country in general, about addressing parental concerns every step of the way, rather than playing catch up so we don't see a high level of vaccine hesitancy when these young kids are eligible to go get their shots. In the meantime, how should parents be operating if they are vaccinated, but their kids are not? I, I, the first part of your question broke up, but I'm, I'm deducing that you said, what should parents think if they're vaccinated and their kids are not? Why should their kids get vaccinated? You know, what it really comes down to is that if people are vaccinated as a whole, we have less gaps in protection, less chances for outbreaks, less chances for people to actually transmit the virus. Now, a recent look at hospitalized children, which just came out last Friday, showed that, yes, we still have the ability for kids to catch COVID-19, also get hospitalized, wind up in the ICU. And it's especially concerning for kids who have any underlying medical conditions 
condition. So kids who may have asthma, diabetes, or obesity, and we know that if a parent is vaccinated, your kid, especially as we reopen and schools reopen and kids get back to doing all the amazing things they were doing a little bit more than a year ago, there's gonna inevitably somebody else out there who may pass on the virus to your child. So it's really important everyone who can get protected does so. So what do you do in the, in the meantime though, right? I, I, am, I am not, I am vaccinated. So technically I can go to a dinner party and I don't have to wear a mask, but my son isn't. Does he have to be the only one at the dinner table wearing a mask? How do you handle that? That is a tough one, you know, because no kid wants to be the only one wearing a mask. Right. I think modeling behavior and having that conversation with your, with your child in that scenario is really important. Also, the guidelines about taking off a mask if everyone around you is vaccinated, that also holds true. Now, if you're taking your child to an indoor restaurant or somewhere, especially in a place where vaccine levels are low and you got to think about the difference between some states in the South versus California or New York, that's a real factor. But I hope during summer when the weather's a little nicer, we take our kids outside where we know it's safe for them to take off their mask. And that's something we want to see happen with summer camps. When kids are going outside, there's more ventilation. They can be kids. They can run around. And even those who are unvaccinated or aren't eligible can take those masks off. But in a scenario where a child may have to wear a mask, it's really important parents model that behavior. Practice mask wearing at home. Put on a Spider-Man mask. Just get your kid into the spirit and know that your child models behavior after you and your optimism is contagious. And Dr. Taylor, the pandemic has affected children's, you know, mental health and development in so many ways. Socialization one way, going back to school, my own kids seem oh, a little more awkward maybe than they might have been uh, a year away from their fellows. And they don't come out, as you've pointed out, saying I'm sad or depressed. So what can parents do to best support our kids in this very strange time? Yes, I mean, our kids, a lot of our kids were stressed and anxious even before the pandemic. So check in with them, give them what if situations, feed them real information and let them know that this too shall pass. But the key is to be safe and also pay attention to those normal activities that we did before bedtimes, monitoring screen time, spending time with the family and acknowledging the impact that connection has. So talk to them about the anxiety they may have going back to school and let them know ways that they will be safe and also start that interaction now over the summer, have them with friends over outside safely, talk about vaccinations and all of those things that we do as parents to alleviate their stress. Now is the time for good communication, certainly exercising, but a real sense of trust and connectivity. All right, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Patel, great to have you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.